is a coping sled. This is one that we've made using a bunch of T-Track components and we've put all the components together in a kit so you can make it yourself as well. The basic premise of a coping sled is it's used on a routing table to allow you to run pieces of timber through the router where you're actually cutting the end grain rather than along one of the long edges. The reason you need one of these sleds is when you are cutting the end grain, two things can happen. The uh, piece can become out of square and it's very hard to hold it square to the bit. And the other thing is you can get a lot of tear out. Most commonly people use a coping sled for doing rail and style uh, frames, uh, picture frames, windows, that sort of thing. Small, small frames where you need to cope the end of your rails. It can also be used as a small parts sled for your router table if you have a really awkward or small component that you need to run through one of the router bits on the table this is a great way of holding it in place. First thing is the base. This is a um, piece of 9mm MDF that is what holds the miter slider and all of the other components are then attached to the base. We have this sliding clamping plate and what this does is slides along in those tracks and allows you to clamp your workpiece up against that fence so that it can't become out of square. This is another piece of 9mm MDF. Well, it was obviously cut from the same piece, but you get the idea. We have our fence here, which is this um, piece of 70 by 30 mil dressed pine. Uh, 70 by 30 are the dimensions that I will be using for my instructions. I actually just had a piece of dressed pine sitting around the workshop and that worked perfectly. You could dress down some structural pine, if you have some hardwood you can use that too. 70 by 30 just kind of works for the components that we're using. And then the last timber piece that we'll be making is this sacrificial fence. So this is actually attached to our main fence by using a T-slot that we've routed into this piece and then sliding onto some T-bolts that allows us to lock this in place. The reason we have this is as we're running through our pieces to be coped, we want this to prevent any tear out on our actual pieces and that's why it's sacrificial. So we make it longer than we need, so whenever it gets uh, too messy, we can cut that off, move it along again until we have fresh timber behind our workpiece. All of the other components are T-track components, including some T-bolts, some knobs, some handles, which allow you to move the sled easily and safely. Got our mitre slider and our toggle clamp, which is clamped down onto our fence. First thing we need to do is cut all of our timber components. We're gonna create two MDF components. The first one is the base, and that is 250 mils wide by 400 mils long. And then we have our sliding clamping plate, which is also 250 mils wide, but only 200 mils long. So it is worth just checking. We'll be aligning all this later, but um, just get those two pieces. Then you're gonna need a piece of, for your fence, which like I said is 70 by 30, and this is 250 mils long as well. So you'll see that all of these pieces are the same length and then we have one long piece which is our sacrificial fence this for me is 400 you might find that that gets in the way but we are going to chop bits of it off this is the bit that's going to have that t-track in it and this is out of uh, 30 mil stock the same 30 by 70 but I've cut it down to 30 by 35 and so this is actually going to sit on edge so it's ever so slightly taller well five mils taller than the fence and then it's gonna slide back and forth so we can get our correct distance from our router bit and also use that as a sacrificial backing piece. So a couple of things to quickly mark while you have these laid out like this. It'll be easier for you later if you know which sides are which. So I would just remove this um, sacrificial fence for now and you've got your base, your sliding clamping plate and your fence. And I would just align the fence with the edges of that base, draw a line there, and just write fence on this side. Now that will be covered up by your fence, so you don't worry about seeing that. Uh, it's just to help you give a line, get alignment later on. And then I would rule on the other side where this sliding clamping plate is, and I would just write 
clamp plate. This just allows you to know which side is gonna be up on your jig and which side is gonna be down. That's gonna help when we're drilling all the holes and routing out bits and pieces. And I would just also put some arrows, which are gonna be the direction towards the router blade. So with the clamp to your right, sorry, with the fence piece to your right and the clamping plate to your left, the router bit will be to the front. So I'm just gonna draw two arrows. These are gonna be covered up later, but this is just gonna help you figure that all out. Uh, it's also probably worth drawing a small arrow on the clamping plate and the fence, just so that we always know which sides we're working on. The next thing we need to do is just draw two lines on this clamping plate. So set your marking gauge or your sliding rule or whatever you wanna to use to 30 mil. And we're actually gonna draw a um, 30 mil line along the edges of this clamping plate on the long edge, on the 250 mil edge, not the 200 mil edge. And I'll hold this up so you can see it in just a second. Okay, so like I said, I've drawn uh, two lines 30 mil in from the 250 mil edge on both edges, so one here and one here. And those, we're gonna be using that to reference later on. From here, we're ready to basically, basically take all of this over to the router table and start drilling our holes and routing out slots and rebates for the T-track bits, etc. cetera.